All right, let's begin. My name is Allison Rendelman, lead of our Customer Success Associates at YCharts, and hosting our webinar today from the YCharts product team is Caleb Eplett, VP of Product Management, and Rusi Shaw, a product manager. Today, our hosts are introducing the new dynamic model portfolios, where you can now load historic allocation changes and present those strategies with all of the model portfolio enhancements. Caleb and Rushi will demonstrate for us today just how to use the new dynamic model portfolios on our platform, as well as a few common use cases. We will have a short Q&A session at the end, but if you have any questions that come up during the webinar, you can submit them on the lower left-hand side of your screen, and we'll follow up soon with the information you're looking for. Please note that the content of this webinar is meant for product educational purposes only, and is not intended to be used as investment advice, nor is YCharts acting as an advising party regarding client funds in any way. Finally, we'll post a recording of this webinar to the Support Topics page of YCharts, and a copy will be sent to all attendees. Now I'm going to hand it over to Caleb to get us started. Allison, thank you, and good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for joining us for this month's installment of our product webinar. Uh, extremely excited to have, uh, you know, a couple of representatives from the product management team of YCharts here on the webinar today. Uh, you know, those of you that uh, attend these webinars often are probably familiar with you know seeing either Rushi or myself on these calls but uh, really exciting to, to have us both here so um, you know we'll jump right in a quick agenda of what we're going to cover today um, obviously you all joined our webinar to learn a little bit more about dynamic model portfolios a new feature that rolls out on October 28th for all of our professional users so first thing we'll do is you know really iron out what that is and and why we're excited about it um, next, we'll actually jump live on YCharts, and Rushi's going to do a hands-on demonstration of several different key applications for dynamic model portfolios. And then we'll wrap things up by talking a little bit about how dynamic model portfolios compare to the existing functionality that many of you are used to with our static model portfolios. So Rushi, if you want to jump onto the next slide here. Perfect, thank you. So before we jump in, did want to also take an opportunity today you know, because, uh, you know, in the spirit of Rushi and I being on the webinar today, hosting things, just to talk a little bit more about the broader concept of product management at YCharts. Um, you know, one thing that hopefully our clients are extremely familiar with is that we really love your feedback. Um, it is the number one force that drives our product direction and our roadmap and projects that we're always working on. So can't emphasize that enough. You know, if you aren't actively in touch with your customer success representative here at YCharts or getting you know, feedback to us through support tickets or our chat function, um, you know, please do that because we love love to hear that feedback and it really does impact where our product goes. Um, you know, another thing that, you know, many of you may know, but did want to at least shed a little bit of light on is here at YCharts, we do software releases every single week. So that gives us the ability to bring new functionality to you in the market, you know, very frequently. Um, but what it also does is it means there's a ton of new functionality and, and new features that are constantly hitting the website. So wanted to draw to your attention some of the different avenues or routes that we use to kind of make these features, um, you know, something that you're aware of and, and help you make the most of them. So these webinars are a great example. We do these webinars every month where we feature uh, specific workflows, use cases, and new functionality that we brought out to the, the website. Um, but we also have a great blog. You know, if you go on the website and, and go, you know, navigate through that top bar and, and click on the blog and, and subscribe to that blog, that will give you great insights. Uh, we have some tutorials that you'll see overlaid on YCharts, um, you know, that will pop up from time to time calling out new features. Uh, give those a read when you see them because usually we kind of design those to point you out and, and take you through the first few steps of how to leverage a new function. Uh, every week we also have an email that comes out uh, that offers some expert tips. So this weekly email is designed to share some uh, very helpful kind of tricks and uh, hacks to using YCharts and getting the most out of it. If you're not on that email or getting that on a weekly basis, definitely reach out to your customer success representative here and make sure that uh, they add you to that list. Um, and then we also have a, a weekly um, email set and, and a, a monthly newsletter too that come out that uh, give you great updates. So keep an eye out for all of those things. If any of that doesn't sound familiar to something that you're currently receiving and you'd like to, uh, reach out and let us know and we'll make sure we get you on those lists. Um, lastly, we are going to be rolling out a uh, slightly more comprehensive survey for our customers before the end of the year. Um, nothing that's going to take you more than 10 or 15 minutes to, to fill out, but we're really excited to, to get some feedback on some of the functionality that we've rolled out this year, as well as 
uh, start to uh, test the waters on some ideas that we have for the future. So please keep an eye out for that and, and do your best to fill that out. And we're looking forward to getting the results out of that survey. But uh, today we're, we're here to talk about dynamic model portfolios, right? So what exactly are dynamic model portfolios? Um, they're exactly that, right? So if you've been using Y charts for some time and using our model portfolios, you understand how those work probably. Um, what we've been developing and what we're excited to, to bring out to the market now is the ability to actually have different holdings or different allocations in your portfolios represented historically. Um, you know, those changes in holdings and allocations are gonna be re reflected in the returns, the risk metrics, and other calculations on your portfolios within Y charts. So why did we develop this feature? Um, first of all, the, the kind of main thing that you might think of when you think of having changes to your portfolio over time is any type of strategical or tactical allocation model, right? Where you're actually rotating through different holdings or weights uh, to different um, sectors or allocations within your portfolio. And you can now re represent those in Y charts uh, to really highlight how those strategies have affected the portfolio over time. Uh, a couple other things though that are maybe you know less obvious on the surface level that these dynamic model portfolios are going to bring to Y charts. Um, one is the ability to choose a specific start date, start value, and rebalance dates for uh, historical periods in your portfolio, right? So instead of being limited to starting your portfolio when some securities were introduced or the earliest security had history in a portfolio that you've created on Y charts, you can actually choose a very specific date and you can make changes any day for um, you know, reallocations, rebalances, and you can choose the, I guess, dollar amount, right? Or the, the value of the portfolio on your start date for some very um, specific customized um, data there when you look at the portfolio history. And then lastly, you know, another kind of maybe easily overlooked uh, scenario here is if you have a holding in your portfolio that doesn't have a lot of history, you know, these dynamic portfolios allow you to choose a different holding, uh, maybe a different stock or an ETF or a mutual fund or even an index to represent that weight in your portfolio prior to that younger holding having existence. So Rushi will get into that when we, when we jump into the use cases on the website. And you, know, you might be asking, you know, how do I get access to this feature? Uh, you know, I was just in my account today or yesterday or whenever it might be, um, you know, where do I find this? How will I uh, be able to leverage this? Good news is all of our professional users, you know, will have access to this again when it's released on the night of October 28th. Um, so we're excited that, uh, you know, everybody will be able to leverage it as long as you're on a professional tier. If you're not, reach out to somebody here and, and see what it would take to, to try that out and um, test out this functionality. Um, but um, that's going to come out. You know, everybody's going to have access to it and you're going to build these portfolios very similar to how you would our existing portfolios. And again, Rushi will show you that as we jump into our uh, kind of live demonstration here. So without any further ado, um, I'm going to turn things over to Rushi and go ahead and i think he's going to switch over to y charts view live on the screen here and we'll start to explore these different uh different use cases so take it away rushi all right thanks caleb and thanks everyone for joining uh, i'm just going to jump right into y charts and show you how to create these dynamic models so i'm going to switch over and this is the model portfolios tab on y charts so if you're not familiar on how to get there you would just hover over tools and click on model portfolios and it's going to take you to a menu of all of your model portfolios that you have on your account. In the top right here, you're gonna see create, and we have uh, blank and new from template, which you might be familiar with, but you'll see a new button uh, that's gonna say blank dynamic model portfolio. Once I go into this menu, the creation process is very similar to the way you would create a uh, regular model portfolio, but we do have some different uh, formats for that Excel template because you're gonna have allocation changes historically. So a lot of this up here is the same. Um, and let's just say today we're working with uh, three different clients. I'm gonna start with Clark to kind of talk through how to create the model portfolio. So let's just say we're gonna create Clark's retirement portfolio. And the way you add your actual allocation changes over time is you're gonna click upload data here and it's gonna allow you to drop in a CSV or an Excel file of those allocation changes. Um, this will allow you to you know, export those holdings from wherever you have them for your client, or if you just kind of house those holdings and allocation changes over time in Excel, it's an easy drop right into Y charts to upload all those changes. So there's a couple ways you could do this. One is you could download our template and it'll just give you the columns needed to have those historical allocation changes. 
um, or you could just uh, simply do it on your own. So I have this template open already. I'm gonna click on Clark's portfolio here, and you can see the format that you need your Excel file to be in when you wanna upload it onto YCharts. So it's simply just date, symbol, and target weight as the three main columns. And you'll see over time, I have these allocation changes. So um, for example, on 7-15-2020, which was my last allocation change, um, I'm in, looks like five different ETFs, and here's the target weights for those ETFs. And then you can see over time, historically, I've changed those allocations, and you can have those listed in here exactly like this. Um, so as I scroll through, you'll see historically I have um, a few different allocation changes, and, and once I have those ready to go, I can just save this down as an Excel file and go ahead and upload it. Hey, Rushi, if I could, a couple of things yeah. to point out on this upload file here. So you mentioned those column headers being important so that they map to our system properly. You know, can you give us a little insight too on the first column there, uh, the dates and what format they need to be in, and then also the weights and how those percentages should be formatted? Yeah, definitely. So they could technically be in any type of number format as long as they're in the Excel date format. So what that means is uh, this could be the date number that Excel signifies for 7 15 2020 um, but it might just be easiest to keep it in the date format like i have in this excel file up here um, same thing for target weight instead of 30 percent, i could do 0.3 and it'll still register and understand that uh, you're trying to upload 30 percent for that respective holding just make sure that your total allocation for each date is equal to 100 which you could see down here it says sum 100 percent and that'll uh, not trigger any errors. And if in case you don't have a total of 100%, it will let you know uh, once you try to upload that file. So we do have error messages in there to signify those times when it doesn't equal 100, for example. All right, so once you're ready Great, to go, thanks. yeah, uh, once you're ready to go and you wanna upload that file, you have it saved down. I'm gonna jump back into Y charts. And I'm just gonna click on drop your file. And it's going to open my, my files here. I'm going to click on Clark's portfolio, hit open, and it'll give you this green check mark letting you know that it's in the correct format, and you'll hit submit. Now, it's pretty quick. It'll, it'll grab all of that data from your Excel file, upload it right here. Now we're ready to finish off the rest of the settings to create your dynamic model, and it'll start calculating for you. Um, in this example, you, know, you can definitely add a description here. Um, advisory fees is another great add-on we have. So if you have an advisory fee in your practice, you can upload that in here and add an annualized fee so that it takes that out of the level calculation for your model. Um, you can decide a benchmark based on any index that we have on Y charts. Um, you can also select a rebalance frequency. So um, our normal one that it's defaulted under is quarterly. So this is every at the end of every calendar quarter, it's going to rebalance into these target weights. What you could do actually is select never, and that's basically saying only when you have an allocation change, the model is going to rebalance. Uh, that might be what you're looking for if you have all your rebalance trades in your Excel template already. Um, you would probably want never so that it doesn't rebalance on its own as well. Um, lastly, you can select a series level. So if you want 10,000 as your start level, you can, but you can also select a custom level if you want. After that, you're all good to go. You can go ahead and hit save and it's gonna start calculating. Uh, for the sake of being on the webinar, I already created the model portfolio on my account. So I'm just gonna toggle right over to that quote page. And if you're familiar with Y charts um, and the quote pages, these dynamic model quote pages are gonna look pretty much exactly the same, right? So you're gonna scroll through that quote page, you'll be able to view different metrics like returns, risk, asset allocation, and there's a few key things to remember here. The first is that your return numbers are now based on those allocation changes, which is exactly what we're going for for these dynamic models, right? So that's gonna include your, your changes, which is a lot more accurate to what you might be doing in the actual portfolio. Additionally, risk metrics are gonna also be calculated based on those allocation changes. Different things like asset allocation, um, basically like geographic exposure, fixed income exposure, those are gonna be based on your current allocations. So right now I'm in these five holdings and my current weights are listed right here. 
And that's what my asset allocation is gonna be calculated off of. So that's important to know for these dynamic models. The one big change we have on these is on the uh, holdings tab. You'll see your current holdings, but we've also added this uh, new module here that will show you historically what your allocations have been. Um, so if you're sitting down with a client, you're having that conversation and they're curious, um, you know, what changes you've made historically, you could definitely just go to the holdings tab and show them this. Uh, you can also export this back into Excel. That way, if you want to add an allocation change in the future, you can export this, add that one allocation change and just re-upload it and it'll update your, your model. Um, so that's that's a big, uh, that's basically the breakdown for how to create that dynamic model and use it on um, Y charts. So another awesome thing about dynamic models, and if you're a Y charts user and you're familiar with all of our tools, you can actually use these dynamic models just like any other type of model portfolio um, or security in a lot of our workflows. If you haven't used QuickFlows, it's an awesome tool that we've created to help with some of those common workflows. Um, for example, now I have this dynamic model and I wanna do a comparison and see how this has done maybe against a benchmark or just the market in general. So we have these single quick flows that you can jump into. I'm gonna go over to comparison and I have this portfolio already in here. And I'm gonna go ahead and just add in uh, maybe SPY and AGG and IWM. So I've added a few ETFs. Maybe I wanna compare the returns of my model. We actually have a quick flow for that. So return comparison, I'll go ahead and click on that and it's gonna jump right into our comp tables tool and give you your model portfolio that you just created and these ETFs and you can compare the returns over time of those. So it's a quick and easy way to do a return analysis. I could do the same thing if you wanna look at risk. So I could jump right in back into that quick flows menu and select risk comparison. Now I'm looking at uh, different risk metrics of my model versus those ETFs. So a lot of um, quick analyses that you could do with your dynamic models um, that are possible with others. If you're not uh, familiar with quick flows or model portfolios, definitely recommend checking them out. Uh, they're, they're great for your workflow of analyzing your, your portfolios. Um, next, I'm gonna jump into a few different um, workflows that you might be familiar with in your practice. Um, if you're an advisor, you definitely, uh, we definitely thought about what you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis when we created these dynamic models. The next person I'm gonna talk about is, uh, let's just go with Peter for this one. Um, and I'm gonna jump right back into Peter's file here. And same concept, right? We have this um, model portfolio upload. So I have date, symbol, and target weight over time. Now here's a couple new use cases you can do with dynamic model portfolios. Let's say you've had this client for about uh, 16 years. They've, they've been with you since, or 15 years, since 1231, 2004. And you wanna show them how much their money would have grown um, if they were in this particular allocation. So what you can do with dynamic models is uh, you could start your portfolio then, which I started on 1231, and over time, I, I changed the allocation. Um, I, I changed the basically how much they're in SPY and AGG uh, to get all the way down to right now, which is 630-2020. And basically from then onwards, it's gonna calculate from this 60-40 allocation. Now, there's another cool thing that you could do here. So I started on 1231. I also did a custom rebalance in here. So you can see if I just kind of focus in on these four dates here, uh, we have 1231, 2009, and then 630, 2010. So you can see this portfolio is actually rebalancing every six months, not three months. Maybe that's a part of your workflow. Um, here's another part of dynamic model portfolios that are so great. You can actually pick any rebalance frequency, um, whether it's five days or six months or one year, and you can have those allocation changes in your account and it'll do that automatically. So once you've done that, again, same concept, you could upload this into Y charts and, and view that model portfolio. So I'm gonna go back into that creation point because I wanna focus on one thing here for uh, Peter's model and that's the custom level. Let's say you're having that conversation with your client and you wanna say, 
you know, I actually, let's say you had $20,000 that you started with me on 12-31-2004. What would that level amount be today? And so you could just type in $20,000 here and hit save and it'll start your model at that level on that date. So in this example that we're using, it would start on 12-31-2004 with $20,000. So I'm going to jump into Peter's portfolio here, and you can see um, exactly on that date going back in history, we have uh, about twenty thousand as yeah twenty thousand as the level that starts, and it has grown all the way to fifty seven thousand today. So that's another workflow that we've kind of uh, built and made sure that you can do with dynamic models. Hey Rushi, if I could interject one more minute here, a yeah. um, couple couple things I really wanted to hone in on this right so. You've got this ability that you've demonstrated to choose a very specific date and time. Um, you know, you did have month and date in your spreadsheet, but I did want to emphasize that can be any date, correct? So, you know, if somebody came in on March 15th, 2004, and that was the day you started investing this, this hypothetical $20,000, it's okay to choose any date. Um, the next thing I wanted to, to point out, right, is uh, one thing that you didn't include when you were building that model, but you could have, is an advisory fee, right? So, you know, if you as an advisor charge a fee, maybe a you know one percent annualized on this portfolio, you could update that, and that will give you an even more accurate representation of what happened to this twenty thousand dollar investment over the time period. And then the last thing I wanted to touch on here, and and this is something we hear from our clients quite a bit, is that you know rarely do you have a period where you've worked with a uh, a given client for you know maybe fifteen or twenty years where no money has been taken out of. Or put into the portfolio, right? So when you're looking at the actual portfolio results on your client's account statements, you know those additions and withdrawals from the account are affecting, you know, the ending level. Whereas this illustration right here allows you to talk to your client about how the performance of the strategy itself has performed and what would have happened to that initial investment without any additional uh, withdrawals or contributions. So I just wanted to touch on those couple of things that I think are going to be really helpful too, Rishi. Yeah, definitely. And the awesome thing is when you want to have those conversations and explain what you're, they're really seeing here. Um, you know, I already went into quick flows and you can show returns, but also we have our visuals and the fundamental charting tool that you can use with these models, too. So if I jump into uh, this chart right here, you can see that uh, it'll take you right to the fundamental charting tool. We could see that level. Um, you could turn it into a presentation view, have your firm logos and colors on here and all that, and throw it into a presentation with your client to communicate exactly what you just explained there, Caleb. So that's that's another great part of dynamic models that you can use them elsewhere in the tool. All right, so the last one I'm going to uh, talk about is Bruce's portfolio, and I want to talk through another workflow that you might have um, as an advisor. So for this one, let's go right back into Excel and look at Bruce's portfolio. And a couple things I want to highlight here. Um, obviously, if your client maybe calls you up and says, I want to invest in an IPO, and they're in that IPO, uh, using a static model portfolio, you would have to invest in that IPO from now, and it would it would basically equally allocate uh, before that IPO date. You don't have that holding, right? So with dynamic models, you can actually get out of that IPO before that IPO date, or actually show when you entered that IPO, right? So in here on 5/14/2019, I let's just say your client um, invested in Uber and they had a target allocation of three percent. You can see before that date, I had a different allocation, and you can show that using these dynamic models. Another Bruce, use case. Uh, sorry, yeah. one more time, just to make sure that I'm clear on what you're explaining here. So, if you had this hypothetical client that uh, you know invested in Uber on 5/14/2019, basically we can determine where those funds that were invested in Uber came from. Whereas in a static model, they would have to be equally removed from all of your holdings kind of in proportion with how your portfolio is weighted. Is that correct? Exactly, yeah. So you can decide um, from what what portions of your portfolio you took out of to invest into Uber. Um, so it gives you a lot more realistic scenario of what you would be doing in that situation. Great. So it, it allows you, uh, in this example, uh, I was in on 1231 in these four Holdings, and so I switched from these four holdings to um, 
these five holdings and you could see where our allocations changed on that date to invest into Uber essentially. So that's that's what you're able to do with the dynamic models. Something else in here that I wanted to highlight, which is something that a lot of our clients have asked for, is basically using a proxy holding, right? So let's say your client is invested in an ETF, and in this example, I just used VOO, and that ETF has only been around for um, about 15 years, but you wanna go a little further back. So what you could do is you can actually put in a proxy holding uh, prior to that date, and it would show you how, and it would track your portfolio the same way, right? So in this example, on 12-31-2004, I just switched to VOO for SPY, and you can see I, I used the same exact allocations, but I was able to put in this proxy holding to track my portfolio further back and go uh, go all the way back to 12-31-2004. So this is a useful workflow if you want to talk through different market environments. Maybe um, that holding wasn't around for the financial crisis. You want to say, hey, what if we had this proxy holding instead during that time? What is your portfolio going to look like? You can do that with this allocation change. So it's really useful, uh, a way to kind of have a little more history of that portfolio that you're talking through. Jumping back into Y charts and going to this quote page, uh, we've handled a lot of the use cases already and talked about them. The one I want to focus on for this portfolio is our PDF reports because they're a huge part of our model portfolios that we, um, you know, created for you for your client communication and for you to show off that portfolio that you're talking about. So if you wanted to create a PDF report, you could click on this reports button here in the top right. And that's gonna open up our report generator and you could select any portfolio that you'd like to uh, to create your model uh, portfolio PDF report. Now, if you're familiar with these with the static model portfolios, it's the same exact way with the dynamic ones. I already created it on my end, um, but you could see some of the amazing things about this report. Number one is just like our fundamental charts, you can firm brand these. You can add your logo on here, you can add your colors on here, just talk to your support contact and they can get you set up with that. Um, but the awesome thing now is that you have your dynamic models tracking on these PDF reports. So you could see the performance over time and uh, risk over time are all gonna be exactly what you're seeing on Y charts. And you can have a more succinct conversation about what their dynamic model has done over time uh, based on those allocation changes. So a lot of this stuff, you're, if you've used these PDF reports, it's gonna look the same exact way. If you haven't used these, uh, again, I'd recommend checking these out because they're great for that client communication piece uh, just to kind of talk through a portfolio. In this example in particular, I have uh, Bruce's retirement portfolio and then I have it against a benchmark. So it's an easy conversation of saying, hey, here's your portfolio and what it's done versus maybe a 70-30 allocation and what has gone right, what has gone wrong, right? You can have that conversation um, in a nice visual way. So uh, that's our PDF report and um, that's, that's a great way to kind of talk through that with your client. So that's kind of all the use cases I had. Um, if you have any other questions, obviously uh, reach out to your support contact and we've kind of thought through a lot of those use cases. Um, I'm gonna pass it back over to Caleb to cover a few more that, um, that we've thought about. Great, thank you, Rishi. Uh, always good to see the product in action. And you know, just to echo what you said there, you know, if you have any questions, there are uh, a large number of scenarios that we didn't play out in this demonstration. You know, go ahead and reach out to us, and we're happy to walk you through those. But if you can flip over to the next slide here, Rush. Um, here, so what we want to do is just spend a couple of minutes, um, maybe helping you understand the difference between the two types of model portfolios that are offered on Y charts now, and when to use which one. Right, so. You can see the middle column here in this matrix represents how the dynamic model portfolios are different from the static model portfolios that you know have existed in Y charts for a little bit longer now. Uh, first thing we want to call out is the creation process. In both types of file or in both types of portfolios, you can create the portfolio by uploading a file. Uh, you know we've heard from a lot of our users that that's a very easy way to get holdings and weights from any other system into Y charts. You can also easily export that data from an existing model in Y charts to re-upload it in our format. So I wanted to make that clear. 
But if you are looking to fill out a, a web form and kind of build that portfolio on Y charts, you know, on the web, you're going to have to use the static model still. Um, start date, next thing here, right? So we showed you how using a dynamic model portfolio, you can choose any start date in history and assign a uh, kind of value to your portfolio at that time. Um, with a static model portfolio, your start date is either going to be the newest security in your portfolio's date of inception or the oldest portfolio holdings um, date of inception. So you have two choices there, but you aren't able to choose a specific date. Um, we, we talked a little bit about rebalances, but, but just to revisit this, because I know it is such an important part of portfolio management, um, you know, with the dynamic models, you can choose any rebalance frequency just by uploading the dates and what weights you rebalance to in that portfolio. You can also choose kind of what happens in between those dates that you've uploaded by saying either no rebalancing happened or it happened on a monthly, quarterly, or annual period in between those given dates that were in the file that you uploaded. With a static model portfolio, you can choose from monthly, quarterly, annual, or never rebalance dates, but you cannot specify specific dates. Um, also, the kind of allocation for holdings pre-inception, you know, Rishi did a good job of explaining the concept of using a proxy holding. So if you do want to use a proxy to get more history on a model portfolio without that reallocation being spread across all of your holdings, and instead pulled out of or added to very specific holdings, you can do that with a dynamic model. With a static model, it's either going to be uh, assigned equally across all of your other holdings based on their weights, or it's going to um, kind of cut off the history at the most um, recent holdings inception date. And then a couple of kind of yes or no things at the bottom here, right? So if you do have tactical or strategic allocation changes that happen to your portfolio over time, the dynamic model is going to be a better fit. Uh, there's no way to represent those historical changes in a static model. However, if you're looking to do a quick analysis of maybe a prospect's current holdings in their portfolio, and you want to compare that to some holdings that you might recommend, the static model may be more of an apples to apples comparison, since you might not know how that uh, client or prospect's portfolio looked historically, and you just want to look at the current holdings. If you do have that history, the dynamic model is a good option. So hopefully this helps a little bit. Um, you know, it, this is going to be a new functionality for uh, you to get your hands on. So if you have questions or comments, you know, going back to that uh, bullet point from a few slides ago, we love feedback. So, so please provide us with, with any questions or feedback that you have as, as you begin using this functionality. And then the last thing we want to do is uh, give you a chance to ask any questions that you have um, after, this, uh, after this webinar and, and before you actually get your hands on this new functionality. So I think Allison has been collecting questions that came in throughout the webinar. And we'll turn things back over to her to see if anything has come through that we could address uh, real quick here. Yeah, definitely. Uh, thanks, Caleb, and, and thanks, Rishi, for helping us unveil the new dynamic model portfolios functionality and those different use cases on how we can use this new tool. I know personally from um, my team and based on the feedback that we get, there's a lot of us who are really excited to see this feature come out, and we look forward to future product enhancements from your team down the line. So, uh, like you mentioned earlier, I, I did um, collect a couple of questions um, for what we cover today, and if that's okay, I just want to ask um, you guys a few of them now. So, um, the first question we have is, can I upload portfolios with dollar amounts or shares? Yeah, I, I can take that one. <laughs> um, yeah, so for the excel template upload and we we showed a few of those uploads on the webinar you you could tell that the only columns were uh date symbol and target weight so for your actual upload and the template we have um, that file won't work but we do have one internally that we've been uh that we've built where you can actually use dollars or weights um, so I would just reach out to your support contact if that's something that you're doing often, and we could send you that file, and um, it'll allow you to toggle through not only uh, target weight, but also dollars or uh, shares in that scenario. Awesome. Yeah, Thank just you. to add to that, sorry, really quick, Allison, you know, whatever format you have data in, if you're trying to figure out the best way to get that data up into YCharts, just reach out to your, your customer success manager or someone on our support team. And we'll help you. Um, it's, it's usually pretty easy for us to help you create a file that will easily convert data over into a format that will work in Y charts. So uh, don't hesitate to reach out for help with those. Great. Um, the next question I have for you all is: Do all Y charts users have access to dynamic model portfolios? Yeah, good question. 
And uh, the answer is, is yes, as long as you're on our Y charts professional version, right? So um, if, if you're on a different tier of Y charts and you want to try out this functionality, uh, please reach out to you know, you know, somebody on our team and, and ask them how you can get set up with a trial of our professional tier and, and give uh, this new functionality a, a good tryout. But right now it is going to be available to everybody with a Y Trust professional license. Okay, great. Um, and then I'll just add one more question here. And, and I think, you know, Rushi, when you were bringing up the templates earlier, we have another question on that. Do I need the Excel add-in to run the upload template? Uh, no, you don't. So you just need uh, to be able to use Excel or a .csv file to upload that template. If you did want to use that one that we created internally that allows you to use uh, dollars or shares, then yes, uh, you would need the Excel add-in. But for the template that's on the website, the one you can download, uh, you do not need the YCharts add-in. Awesome. Great. Thank you again, Rushi and Caleb, and thanks to everyone who attended today's webinar. I'd like to reiterate that a recording of this webinar will be sent to all attendees and made available in the support topics section in YCharts. In case you need to review anything we talked about today or to share it with your colleagues. For any questions that you might have submitted during this presentation and we didn't get to, we'll be reaching out soon with the information you're looking for. We always appreciate any feedback that you may have. If you like this webinar or have thoughts about what you'd like to see for upcoming webinars, feel free to reach out at support at ycharts.com. Thanks again.